Go to John Battersby now, one of the journalists who covered that historic moment 30 years ago. I'm told Battersby was the first person to have shaken Mandela's hand after his release. John Battersby, very good morning to you. How did that come about, that you were the first person to shake his hand? Good morning. Well, it was a complete fluke of history, actually, because uh, uh, unlike uh, most of the world's media who had been um, thronging around the, uh, the gate, of the prison warders house since at six o'clock in the morning um, I arrived at uh, five to three uh, because uh, Mr. Mandela was due to have been released at three but as we know uh, it took another hour and uh, I didn't really uh, think about the rules of the game I guess my head was so full of this incredible day of history I just walked into the prison gates and stood close to where the uh, vehicle of the uh, SABC announcer Clarence Cater was standing and I try to make myself as inconspicuous as possible and so I uh, for the next hour I was standing uh, uh, waiting um, for the for the great moment and how did it feel and then of course when uh, well it was an extraordinary day you know um, uh, it was one of those days when one sort of forgets everything else other than the moment that you're in knowing that this is going to be a moment in history which will be um, recorded for all time. So uh, when I finally uh, at four o'clock saw uh, um, uh, Nelson Mandela, his wife Winnie next to him and members of the uh, mass democratic movement who had been in consultation with him for the past hour uh, talking I understand about the speech that he was due to make on the parade um, yeah all, all, all sense of everything else was lost and uh, as he walked down I guess I had a broad smile on my face and uh, he saw me and then walked over to me to shake my hand. Uh, he, um, he recognized me from my photograph in the Cape Times because I used to write a column from London and I'd been writing a lot about um, the ANC in exile and, uh, and, and the build up to this moment. So um, that was the moment at which, uh, at which we connected and, and shook hands. I have to say it was completely unplanned. <laughs> it's, just, it's just what happened. Uh, how, how fantastic to be, as they say, in the right place at the right time. But, I mean, this is, wasn't the first time that you two met. You spent a lot of time with him, went on many journeys with him. What was it that you saw in him that made him the sort of politician that he was and that he became? Well, I think what one sees, one saw in Mandela is not only the politician. He certainly was a very shrewd politician who had this huge advantage of the moral authority and stature that he gained from having spent 27 years behind bars in order to achieve a goal not for himself but for um, all the people of South Africa. So uh, the thing one was most aware of in his presence was that he concentrated entirely on the humanity in the person that he was talking to at that time and it was a transformative experience um, I know many people um, whose lives were changed just by the briefest of meetings with him and uh, I certainly experienced that on uh, on many occasions but the first occasion I actually sat um, at his side was at the foreign correspondence uh, annual dinner I was the chair of the foreign correspondence association at the time and uh, it's, it's an extraordinary experience because initially it's kind of very intimidating to be sitting next to this larger-than-life icon and then um, totally disarming when all he's interested in is, is, is you and, uh, and, you know, your family, uh, your circumstances and so forth. So it's that, uh, his presence as a person, which um, comes first to mind, although, of course, as we know from the negotiating process, he was also a very shrewd politician on top of that. Uh, you just wonder what he'd be thinking now. I mean, you say he had a, that humanitarian focus. He really worked people. I mean, now what we're seeing from a politician point of view is more sort of smash and grab kind of attitude. Well, yes, um, I think that uh, Mandela's uh, action in, first of all, spending all that time uh, sacrificing his own life with his family and his children and so forth for the for for for, for the people um, was uh, something that 
um, you know, was 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 with him for for life. So w when he when he stepped out of jail, um, that was in a sense the most important moment for South Africa because he then set an example. He became a role model, but he knew that the um, the the huge historic process of um, achieving a negotiated settlement between two apparently irreconcilable um, groups was um, was a long-term project and that things were not all going to be you know sort of hunky-dory overnight and the idea of you know everybody lives happily ever after in the rainbow nation was in retrospect um, very unrealistic because when you've had 40 years of uh, of 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 the, what you know the, the reality of South Africa and apartheid um, and the divisions and all of that you're not going to have um, a nice neat uh, uh, solution to that but I think he would be very disappointed um, to see how the process um, has unraveled particularly during the uh, 10 years um, of President Zuma but not only that um, uh, I think he would be disappointed but he would not he would not for one moment um, doubt the correctness of the action that he took and the value of that negotiated settlement because in the sort of day-to-day -day, uh, cut and thrust that goes on and um, and the sort of opportunism that has crept in and of course the corruption and so forth um, which is not of course unique to South Africa um, behind that lies this example and vision that Mandela had and implemented which is there to remind us that uh, that there is always something higher to aspire to than okay. uh, than what is going on at the present all right John Battersby very good to talk to you uh, let's stay with this story and uh, Woody well, thank you very much, uh, Jane. And uh, our colleague, Voyom Vogo, is at uh, Victor Fester Prison, now known as uh, Drunkenstein Centre. Let's uh, connect with him now. Voyom, uh, good morning to you. We've just had a conversation with uh, John Buttersby, a journalist at the time, who was lucky enough to shake Matiba's hand on that day when he walked out of that very prison where you were earlier this morning. Uh, he reminds us that Matiba was a man of moral conviction. One wonders what our current president would have to say about the moral decay in the very same party of Mandela. Well, one man whose job it is to really look after uh, Nelson Mandela's legacy is, uh, in fact, Silo Hatang, who is the CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. He's going to take us through what uh, will be happening here um, at uh, this house that uh, Nelson Mandela occupied for about 14 months before he was released on this day 30 years ago. What should we expect this morning? Well, thank you very much. Uh, today is a very special day, and I think it, uh, again, gives us an opportunity to reflect on the South Africa that we wish to have. 30 years on, we still have all kinds of challenges that we should be dealing with, Vuyo. And I think if we are to do anything differently, is to honor Madiba's legacy by saying, how do we become a different country? So that's what we're going to try and do here today. We have most of the members of the reception committee. Uh, these are the people who were receiving Madiba, making sure that uh, everything goes well on the day. I had the honor and the privilege of uh, seeing uh, Dennis Goldberg uh, yesterday and during our conversation he said you know uh, when you have 20,000 uh, people in one place there's bound to be trouble but how come that there was never trouble and he said it's because people knew the importance of the day and these people are going to then be talking about that but we want to then push them further that it shouldn't be just about reminiscing about that past but uh, to say what kind of future are we looking for what, what do we need to be doing differently in, in the future to ensure that we then deal with the, all the social ills that we have in our country? Um, so some of the people who are here, we have a special international guest, um, Shane Wong, um, who will be joining us also at the 
the city hall event. Um, but uh, but then all all these uh, oldies, you've seen them pass, and and one is proud to then say, we now need to reimagine South Africa that we want to see. To see, I can see your guests are waiting uh, for you to give them direction. So I'm going to release you because what I'm going to do now is go outside the city hall where another part of today's program um, is going to be held a little later on in the afternoon. And that's where Aisha Ismail uh, is our colleague. And she's going to take us through what will be happening a little later on outside uh, the uh, city hall, which is where Nelson Mandela made his very first um, address on this day 30 years ago after he was released from this house where we are. Aisha Ismail. Good morning, Vuyo. Um, it's, it's hard to believe that it's you know been 30 years since Nelson Mandela has been released and it is here on the Grand Parade where tens of thousands of people gathered to come and see Madiba addressing them from the balcony here behind me um, at the City Hall and as you can see I'm just going to move out of shot this area outside the City Hall is on lockdown at the moment they're busy preparing and sweeping the area doing security checks for the VIPs and the guests that have been invited to come and listen to a lecture that will be delivered later today and of course President Cyril Ramaphosa will also be standing on the balcony here at the City Hall where he will be addressing people here um, that will be gathering on the Grand Parade and as I said 30 years ago there were tens of thousands of people who waited for hours in the hot sun waiting for Madiba to arrive from the then Victor Fistar prison and of course he made that historic speech where he said to the people I stand here today not as a prophet but as a humble servant of you the people and then went on to thank the people of Cape Town for for being such a good host and for hosting him for 27 years and um, what a remarkable day it was and and it's going to be interesting to see the turnout today here at the Grand Parade. But um, as I said, the area is on lockdown at the moment. It is very quiet on the Grand Parade because the proceedings here will only be starting around noon today. But back to you, Polly. Thank you very much, Aisha Ismail. At the Grand Parade, and that's where the president later today is going to give that all-important speech. Looking back... 30 years ago when Madiba made his famous speech coming out of Victor Vestea prison. Uh, Jane, I've got to hop back to the words that Aisha used, the words of Madiba, mm. that I stand here as a humble servant of mm. you, the people, not as a prophet. Mm. Uh, the argument today, can it still be argued that the ANC, that he would come out of prison and lead, is still an ANC of high moral standard? Mm. No, it's... It, not at all. I was reading an article on the newspaper and it was quoting his grandson and he says, what happened to that servant leadership when mm. all that people are preoccupied about is the life of luxury, mm. uh, luxury cars, and we've been prepared. Yeah, at I mean, some it's, point. it's, it's some got nothing. Some leaders are even prepared to actually kill each other. Yeah. All because of the resources that they are. No, no, fighting. I mean, it's a, it's a really sad state, isn't it? It's terrible. Can I add a little light note to it? The first time I met Mandela, I was in Brussels, and I'd eaten crab, and I had an allergic reaction. So I spoke to him, and my face was like a balloon. <laughs> I didn't even have eyes in my face, so it was a <laughs> probably not as memorable for him as it was for me. I know. Oh. I, know. I know. Well, here I was. <laughs> well, here I am. Never have, having met the man, too young. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. I was really <laughs> <laughs>